it's one of the most beautiful places in the world, the Hawaiian Islands. But did you know since 1950, these islands have been hit by five major hurricanes that have caused serious damage to people's homes? And on the mainland, we've seen over 160 hurricanes in the last century. Well, today I'm on the island of Maui, and we're gonna show you how to build a hurricane-resistant home. Along the coastline of Maui, there are numerous homes under construction that could lie in the path of the next potential hurricane. And because the island is also vulnerable to tidal waves, it's been chosen by the Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA, to become a disaster-resistant community. Through a FEMA program called Project Impact, home builders are being encouraged to use reinforced raptor ties and other construction techniques that will make their homes more resistant to natural disasters. Buzz, this is one of the most beautiful building sites in the world, but you're less than 50 feet from the Pacific Ocean. How do you build a house that's not gonna be blown away by the storms? Well, what we've done is we've taken the County of Maui code and we basically just doubled it. We uh, came in here knowing that we had some real problems to deal with and we started at the bottom and worked our way up and just built everything as heavy duty and as storm resistant as we possibly could. Now there's a lot of things you have to deal with, you know, storms and floods. What are you trying to design for? Well, our basic trade winds come out of the northeast and they run between 15 and 35 miles an hour daily. We also have the flood issue from the stream on the uh, south side of the property, which the uh, West Maui Mountains are some of the wettest mountains in the world and it floods over here. And so we have to deal with that and our foundations have to be able to take that, that abuse. We also have the issue of the possible tidal wave coming down the coast. The Kona storms come across the channel this way and so there's a lot of different issues that we have to deal with. And, uh, by building these type of houses, we really, I think, covered most of the major concerns. Well, Buzz, the first thing I notice about this house, it's about 10 feet out of the ground. That's right, we, as I mentioned, we're in a real bad flood zone down here. And so what, one of the challenges was trying to pick a design of a home that fits in being this far off the grade. And this is a post and beam type construction. I noticed that these columns are pretty good size. They're about 12 inches by 12 inches. That's right, they're 12 by 12 posts and they run all the way through the whole house up to the roof rafters. And one of the biggest things about this uh, construction is the type of footings we've done. Now what we did was we took the basic footing and we expanded on it. Now this footing actually runs out about five feet square and about five feet deep all around this pad here. And what that's done is that's given us a real solid foundation to work with and then we interconnected everything with lots of steel, doubled up on the concrete required, and then bolted right through the posts. Now these uh, wood frame members are actually bolted down into the concrete. Then I also notice you have a series of these gray beams that run across here, these concrete like rectangles that tie each of these columns together. That's right, the grade beams weren't really necessary per code, but what we thought was, we're on this river, we have some real flood issues to deal with, and we decided we'll throw in the grade beams, we'll double the size, these are actually two feet thick, and it ties the whole foundation together and we could literally lose a couple of our pads and this thing would still be solid. Well, I noticed that you built this above and beyond the code but also the FEMA guidelines as well. What we're trying to do is we're trying to build as strong as we can to resist any kinds of hurricanes or flooding or storm issues and that's part of the FEMA guidelines. What we have here, Steve, is a nailing pattern to help ensure the shear panel is gonna stay on the wall in connection uh, to the posts. Uh, these are stainless steel nails along with pressure treated uh, plywood and uh, uh, the corrosion factor is a big issue over here because we are so close to the, to the ocean. You know, salt air. The salt air, that's right. Um, another th factor I'd like to show you is our uh, windows. These are uh, basically standard vinyl windows but we put pick this particular brand because the glass is mounted from the exterior rather than the interior. That will help during high winds keep the glass from blowing out and, and that's an important factor, you know, building right here on the ocean. Well, that's great. Well, now let's go take a look at the roof. Sounds great. Well, Buzz, this is one heavy roof. How are you going to hold this down? Well, Steve, what we're doing is we're using a system of notching and uh, bolting into these 12 by 12 posts and these posts run all the way through to the foundation and so we're really hoping that this thing will tie it all together, keep it nice and tight, and uh, really hold the thing together in some heavy winds. Well, I noticed over here these rafters are connected to these beams with some metal ties. That's right. They call for a one hurricane clip 
per, per rafter, and what we've done is we added four in there, so each rafter is held down by four clips, which should really give us some extra protection when we need it. Well, yeah, I guess these clips would be far better than the way we typically do it, which is nail a few 16-penny uh, or three or four-inch nails into it. I also notice that over here you do quite a bit of notching on this ridge rafter here, and how that's uh, put together is kind of, I think, indicative of what you're trying to accomplish. Tell me about this ridge beam. Well, what we've done is we've got a, a glue lamb ridge beam up here, and each one of the uh, rafters that runs into the ridge beam is strapped down from the top with additional metal strapping. And so you can't see it, but this thing is really held together with a lot of metal and a lot of strapping material. Well, what kind of winds could this uh, building withstand? Well, we're, our goal is 140 mile an hour. Well, if you ever have a hurricane go through there, I can't imagine it being much stronger than that. Well, we're hoping. <laughs>